Hello everyone, thank you for watching this video. Uh, my name is Josina and I'm the curator here at uh, Concordia. And today I'm talking to Thijs Ebbe Fokkens and Silke Schoenfeld uh, about their works in the second doublet exhibition. Um, and I would like to hear a little bit about themselves and about their works in this space. So hi Silke, thank you for being here. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself as an artist and about the work that we're seeing here in this space? Hi. Uh, I'm an artist from um, Dortmund, Germany, and for this exhibition I, um, I made a video um, which um, has a documentary-like approach. And the entry point for this video was the cutting down of a cherry tree in my mother's garden. And um, yeah, from this incident I started um, a conversation with her about um, transgenerational trauma. And yeah, this video um, is called uh, I May Always Ask Her Anything and I installed it here in Concordia. Uh, I'll go quickly to Thijs so you can introduce your work a little bit. Hi Thijs. Hello. <laughs> um, I live and work in Den Haag, Holland. Um, my whole practice revolves around the idea that art serves as a, as a, serves as a way to engage with the complexity of the world, of existence. Um, and therefore I create spaces to do that. To deal with compl complexity? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll get into that a little bit uh, <laughs> more later on maybe. Um, uh, Silke, you said, uh, so it's a pretty autobiographical approach that you had in this video. Is that something that you usually do in your work? Um, it's the first time um, that I work autobiographically with video. Um, when I started making art, I um, already worked with the um, photographs that my grandfather took. So um, there has been a period in my life where I already worked autobiographically, but I didn't do it um, during the last 10 years. So um, yes, it's the first time I'm, I'm working autobiographical in, in video. So Silk, another question that I have is, uh, you've documented other group dynamics in previous films, right, uh, in your work, uh, but now you've turned a little bit more inward and, and filmed your pretty much your own group dynamic. Can you share a little bit about that move? That's really a really nice way um, uh, to phrase it, like um, that I'm interested in group dynamics. And with previous films that um, I made, some of them had a documentary-like approach, others were staged. Um, that is definitely a, a topic that always interests me. How um, a group dynamic can be something, or a group of people can be something where everyone feels like very comfortable mm -hmm. and there's this loyalty and um, love and appreciation for each other, but then at the same time it can also become this dangerous thing that turns on you. Um, of course, there are like multiple different contexts where this can happen, but especially within a family, like these complexities are very hard to see when you are part of it. When you're part of it, yeah. Um, and I, I guess that is something that I was always interested in, and knowing from an early age that my mother had been abused by my grandfather because she was always very open to talk about that, I. I guess I knew at some point in my life I would want to address that topic in my in my work too and how it um, influenced me as a person too. So yeah, that's that's why I chose this autobiographical approach. Um, Thais, um, how autobiographical is your work? Because you said you wanted to create space for complexity. Is it also uh, a way to create space for your own complexity or are you uh, inviting others in into your installations? Uh, both. It's a very personal process. Uh, all the interests and fascinations are uh, personal and I think uh, <coughs> that may very well translate to, um, to others as well, that they come across the same uh, complexities. Uh, I do think there is a, there are some personal struggles that uh, I, I see as, as 
societal struggles as well. Like? Um, like um, recognizing and enabling another kind of sensibility uh, in um, how you position yourself in the world and how you uh, act to, uh, on your surrounding and other uh, beings. Um, and this is, this is something I have, uh, I, I, I understand uh, in, on an intellectual level, this idea of radical connectivity, that everything is uh, holistically uh, entangled. Um, um, but I, 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 it's really hard for me to, to really hold and to grasp, so I need some tools to uh, help me with that, and that's where the art comes in too. Speaking of tools, <laughs> yeah. I'm very interested in, in uh, the way you set up your installation here in the space. Could you uh, share a little bit about that process? Um, How you do it, um, why you do it maybe? Yeah, so the making for me is not uh, like, I don't work, I don't really work as a designer, that I, I, uh, I, I, I create the art and then I implement the art in a way, or that I make it, uh, conceptualize it, and then I install it. I do design like a conceptual frame, but it's more like a motto to work with, or the, this is the focus of the attempt. Um, but then when I said about working, it's more like uh, the process I know from being a draftsman, like making a drawing. So you work with an intention, but uh, uh, it's kind of in, it's in a dialogue. So you switch positions also as a creator. It's more, <coughs> sometimes more, um, you're not driving the, you're not steering the car, you know? You're in the back seat of the idea and the art that is driving itself in a certain way. So you're allowing uh, the work to appear or to come into existence yeah. by just bringing tools and, and materials into the space, right? Uh, yes, I, I, I try to get into the process of uh, reacting uh, so if I first had to s I set up to a certain point to get an environment and, s and then think, okay, what, is, what does this environment need to be, uh, uh, what needs to be adjusted? And then I can go by just intuitively the, the very inarticulate uh, atmosphere, mm -hmm. but uh, I can also uh, lean on uh, my, uh, my the goal I had before. Yeah, like you're not yeah. starting from zero. No, no, no. I, I am looking for to pushing the focus of the audience of the space in a certain direction. But first, I also wanted to ask you a little bit, Silke. Um, maybe you can share a little bit how you set this up because you're not just showing your video. You're you've built an environment for your video. Can you share a little bit how you how you uh, yeah realize or conceptualize that? Yeah. Um, so when you enter the exhibition, um, the first thing you see is um, a short text about Dublé and um, the curtain that is also a part of, um, of, of the installation. And the um, dark green curtain um, uh, made of velvet is um, on the one hand a reference to um, the the garden like with its color and at the same time the um, green or the velvet curtain is um, a material or an object that is very familiar to us from the theater or the cinema so um, it already hints at this idea that everything you see on on video is, is staged um, uh, that's something that I'm um, convinced of even though I have this documentary-like approach. Um, there is still like so many things um, th that would never allow a film or a video to be sub yeah, objective, um, in the sense that um, yeah, the uh, perspective or the um, angle and the um, frame that is chosen is is staged. The editing. Um, uh, also um, is something that uh, creates 
a very specific narration and yeah especially with this video it's also very personal because there are these text elements mm -hmm. that um, uh, are my voice um, yeah and the velvet curtain is something that lures you into the space so you walk through a small labyrinth and then you enter um, the big room where uh, the video is shown and the audience is invited to sit down on brown benches that uh, reflect also the material of uh, the wooden floor and at the same time um, of course they are made of wood and so there's a reference to the cherry tree which is very obvious um, and there's also a nice um, hidden reference that you will get when you um, watch the whole video because within the video my mother talks about a brown bench that she would like to carry um, to a different position mm -hmm. in the garden. Um, so while you're sitting watching the video and you hear my mother talking about it, you sit on, on that you're bench. sitting on the bench. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one indeed. And so um, can you tell us a little bit, you addressed it previously when you said uh, that uh, the video deals with the sexual abuse uh, your mother suffered or it references it. Um, uh, how did you feel uh, bringing that theme into your work? Uh, did you feel a certain responsibility as an artist to deal with it in a certain way? Mm, so the, like, as I said before, the entry point was the cutting down of the cherry tree, which made me realize that um, I know that, uh, like I, since I'm, I'm, I'm pretty young, I already knew that my mother has been abused by my grandfather. Um, and she now lives in um, her parents' home and she takes care of, uh, of the garden, which um, is something that my grandfather used to do. So when she cut down the cherry tree, um, I started uh, thinking about the meaning of this gesture and um, I, I was longing to have this kind of conversation with her. I wanted to ask her what it means for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, right from the beginning, it became quite clear that um, my interpretation of this uh, act is a very different one than hers. Like she was much more pragmatic about it. Yeah, <laughs> let the sun shine in. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And she was like really tired of those like uh, rotten cherries f falling on the ground for, for many years already. and. Of course, like I saw all these like metaphorical meanings in, in, in these uh, gestures and for her it was much more like pragmatic and uh, Very just practical. practical thing to do. German practicality. Uh, yeah, prob maybe, <laughs> yes, yes. And um, so like from this urge to have this conversation and knowing that my mother like this, so this expression, which is also the title of the work, like I may always ask her anything is, really something that she would um, promote uh, within our family structure. You give her a great voice through your video. There's definite th themes uh, that overlap, I think, uh, in both your works. And I think the idea of transformation and maybe intergenerational trauma or grief and then, then coping or dealing with that, I think uh, that's really uh, significant uh, in both, both installations, I would say. Um, can you share a little bit about how, how you both created this space and what were your thoughts when doing it? I think it's like this was really like also the link that I just had in my head because um, throughout the conversations I think for both of us it became quite obvious that we um, wanted to create a space where this like train of thought that we would share with each other could also be something that uh, we would like to share with the audience. So this space is um, a reading room where people can sit down and spend as much time as they want during the opening hours to dive into the literature that um, Thais and I um, picked for this space, which um, yeah has something to do with our work on different levels. Thank you both for now. Uh, Thank you for watching. Uh, uh, this exhibition will be on view until the 5th of January to 2023. Uh, so we hope to see you there. And otherwise we uh, invite you for the next doublet. And so see you then.